But Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father, for the ability that we have to be able to worship you, Father, tonight in our midweek, Father, of maybe difficulties. Maybe we're going through something and know that you, Father, are the only one that can rescue us. And we pray that tonight, Father, we have such great things to share with our families. But Father, you're still on the throne. That's number one. But the miracles, Father, we are seeing. But Father, we're seeing miracle after miracle in, 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 in people, Father, being healed and people, Father, being restored. And we just thank you for that that you do for us. We don't deserve it, God. We know that. But your grace is sufficient and your grace is upon us. And your grace, Father, gives us an opportunity to be able, Father, to reach your throne. And we ask that tonight, Father, we can do that. Through this simple topic, Father, maybe it's a some eyebrows, Father, might have gone up on, on the title, but we know that forgiveness, Father, is the real F word. Forgiveness is something that we are to give and receive as well. And Father, we pray for that heart and heart, the heart and mind, the heart and spirit today. We pray for that sick body that might not understand what we're doing today, but they were scrolling, Father, through their phones or their computers, and they saw us. And I pray that tonight, through the songs we sang and what we say tonight, the Father speak into our lives. And we ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, it's our midweek service, and you might watch this later. You might... Uh, Share it if you can right there under your page. Just click on share. And let's get this topic out to your families. Let's get it out to your neighbors. Let's get it out to all your friends. Uh, this is an important topic. This is a topic of forgiveness. This is the topic. Um, this forgiveness topic is what really holds us back from becoming better people, becoming better Christians, walking uh, a better life. And I'll give you some examples personally and, and what I've seen and some stories that I put together for you tonight. I hope that you understand that it's, it's the control and the power that someone might have over you or you over someone uh, when there's no forgiveness or asking for forgiveness or even forgiving someone. There is an attachment. There is... There is um, uh, you know, a control. And we don't want that. We want to be servants. We want to be, you know, we want to to minimize ourselves as low as possible and be able to forgive those that have done us wrong, those that have hurt us, those that maybe uh, said some false things. Uh, you forgive them. They're your brothers. They're your sisters. Uh, this is the best thing. The best medicine is forgiveness. And and tonight, I uh, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Matthew. Uh, chapter 6, and I, and I hope that right there in the comments section that you can write your, your prayer requests, your need. Uh, we have staff members that are praying at this time, so please uh, put on there, maybe you you need to forgive. Maybe you need to be forgiven. Uh, maybe uh, you've somebody's told you, please forgive me, and you haven't been able to forgive them. You might have said yes, but it's still lingering. It's still hurting you. So I pray that tonight, you know, you can set them free and set yourself free as well. Uh, so I want to take you to the book of Matthew chapter 6, and I'm going to read uh, a few verses. I'm going to read uh, from verse 1 until... Uh, Verse 15, now, let me read that to you, and I want to I see if you can get the picture of how important Matthew chapter 6 is. The, the, the first topic that we read is, uh, do good to please people to please God, uh, do good to please God. And it says like this in verse number one, Matthew chapter six. I hope you have your, your Bible with you. This is a, an incredible book to read every day. It's, it'll change your life forever, I guarantee it. Um, listen to this. It says, take heed that you do not do, not do your charitable deeds before men to, to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, and they may have glory from men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly. 
very, very important. I mean, you can do several sermons just on that part. But I want us to continue, and I want you to see my Bible, it's all in red. So this means that Jesus was saying this, and Matthew writing this down. He says in verse number five, and most of you might know this part. It says, and when you pray, you shall not be like a hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, and they may, that they may be seen by men as surely, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly." And when you pray, do not, listen to this, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Now this is where I want us to go. Verse 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I want to read that one more time. Very, very important. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, Neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Folks, let me tell you, in in these days, the hardest thing is to receive. The hardest thing is to do that. Um, But it takes a lot of grace, a lot of peace, a lot of understanding, a lot of uh, a lot of reading God's word, uh, taking a deep breath, you know, uh, taking a little walk, taking, you know, just Put yourself together. Don't ever respond uh, with an emotion. Don't, don't be emotional about responding. Just wait your turn. Let's see what God uh, gives you. But let me tell you, we are to be in harmony with our brother and with our sister. We are to be in unity with them. We are to be, you know, uh, uh, in, in a great picture, I'm going to share with you uh, a, a, a story of a woman that, in her deepest prayer, in her deepest thought, in her, in her time in the hospital, she, she finds out that she was holding this pain inside of her, but she knew that unless she forgave, she would never be free. And then second of all, she knew that if she did not forgive, God would not forgive her. So there's many parts to forgiveness, but the real F word is forgiveness. Today's topic is the real F word. Can you forgive? Can you forget? Can you omit? Can you erase? Can you say, you know, that's not going to hold me hostage ever again? So I'm, I'm going to ask you. I see a lot of people already uh, putting down on their on their comments on our comment section. Please let us know where you're uh, where you're seeing us from. Are you from? in town or you're from out of town out of state please let us know where you're from let us pray for you if you have a a prayer request please put it down we have a, a full staff that is praying for you right now at this time for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others neither will your father forgive your trespasses i recently saw a a news item that was a follow-up on a shooting that happened a year before. An innocent woman was shot in the crossfire between two men. She became paralyzed by the injury. The item was about the huge change in her life since the shooting. The thing that stuck 
or struck me the most was her statement. And this is what she said. I haven't forgiven them yet, but I know I have to. Because if I don't, God won't forgive me. Now listen to this again. This is what was written. I haven't forgiven them yet, but I know I have to. Because if I don't, God won't forgive me. Is there someone out there that you haven't forgiven? Is there someone out there that you haven't fixed things with? Is there some hurt? Is there some pain? Has someone hurt you? Have you hurt someone? I could see the pain that she was in. I could see the life that she had lost. And I wanted to say, no, God loves for who you are. You have been greatly damaged. It's all right. It's all right. Don't worry about it. You don't have to forgive them. But she knew the truth beyond the emotion of seeing a terrible crime like this. The truth is that unless we forgive those who have harmed us, who have sinned against us, God will not forgive us. She had two things true. Number one, we must forgive to be forgiven. Jesus says it in, in numerous places, and Matthew chapter 7 verse 2 says this, For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged, and with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. In Matthew 18, 35 says this, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart to be handed over to the torturers. Forgive your brothers. Forgive your sisters. Forgive your neighbor. Forgive that friend. Forgive those people that have hurt you. In the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 25 says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. Paul says this in Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What a clear message from Paul. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. He will forgive you. The book of James says this, James chapter 2 verse 13, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. That's James. Because with because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Being kind, being honorable, being loving, being caring. That's the most important thing is to be caring and loving. It is so, so important. In the New Testament, if we do not forgive those who harm us, God will not forgive us. What is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? Some people who have trouble with forgiveness think that forgiveness does not take the harm of sin seriously. But forgiveness does take it very seriously. Forgiveness does not excuse sin. It does not say, oh, that's all right. Your sin really hasn't, uh, wasn't a bother. My stay in the hospital wasn't that long and I was able to catch up on my reading. No, forgiveness calls sin, sin. And in many ways, it holds the sinner accountable for their actions. Forgiveness says, you hurt me and what you did was wrong, but I will not hold it against you. I will not try to get back at you and I will not hate you for it. That's what forgiveness does. Forgiveness says, you hurt me and what you did was wrong, but I will not hold it against you. Folks, you need to share this. People need to know about this. People need to know, I'm not going to hold this against you. I'm not going to hold it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm praying God is going to help me. God is going to lead us. This is what's going to happen in the future. This is how I'm going to deal with it. How will, how will you deal with this? Philip Yancey 
in his book, What's So Amazing About Grace, tells a story about a man and a wife who one night had an argument about how supper was cooked. It was so heated that that night they slept in separate rooms. Neither had approached the other to say I'm sorry or to offer forgiveness. And they have remained in separate rooms years after the argument. Can you imagine? Years after the argument. Each night they go to bed hoping that the other will approach them with an apology or forgiveness. But neither goes to the other. God's forgiveness does not wait for repentance. It initiates and calls out repentance by offering forgiveness. Aren't you glad that God is not like us? Aren't you glad that he forgives? Aren't you glad that he puts our sin in the deepest part of the sea? Aren't you glad that that God is not like us? Aren't you glad that God is God? He's on the throne and he's forgiving you, forgiving your neighbor, forgiving the people. God is doing great and mighty things right now. This is why people, some people, have a great difficulty forgiving people. Either they hate confrontation and don't want to confront someone with their sin, so instead they stew in their for unforgiveness and hate, not wanting to do the hard work of forgiveness. It takes hard work, let me tell you. It's hard work to forgive. It's hard work to ask for forgiveness. It's hard work. It's not easy. I'm not here to tell you, you know what, it's easy. You know, it's going to come natural. It's not going to come natural. Our nature wants to fight. Our nature wants to get even. Our nature wants to make them feel the same pain we have. But that's not how God works. God does not work in that way. God works with grace. He works with peace. He works with understanding. He works with honor. He, uh, he works with respect. You know, if someone does that, wrong, that to us wrong, we don't pay bad with bad. We pay bad with good. And I know that's the hardest thing to do. It is. It really is. You might say to me, but isn't God's grace and forgiveness free? Aren't you asking us to earn our salvation by forgiving those who harm us? The answer is yes. God's grace is free, but it is not cheap. When God's grace comes into our lives, it does not leave us as we were. It changes us. And one of the first changes that it makes is to give us the power to forgive. By forgiving others, we are providing that we have accepted God's forgiveness and are willing or living in it. If we refuse to forgive those who harm us, we are showing that we have not really accepted God's grace and thus it is removed from us. When you are not forgiving, you're acting like the world. You're acting like, you know, literally like demons, like the devil, he, he doesn't want us to live that way. He wants us to be reasonable. He wants us to be kind. He wants us to forgive people. He wants us to be just like him, speak like him, walk like him, treat people like him. I mean, every time that they would slap on Jesus, he, he did not fight back. He didn't say anything back. The first thing we want to do is, is we want to fight back. We want to get even. And I'm gonna, I, I want them to feel the pain that I feel. Is forgiveness hard? Absolutely it is. I'm telling you right here, from experience, forgiveness is hard. But when you begin to forgive, when you begin to forgive people, it's easier and easier and easier and easier. People begin to change. People begin to do different things. They're going to notice that it's not affecting you. They're going to notice that, you know, there's something wrong with this person because it's... I mean, he, he's not taking it personal anymore. It's like, I can't crush him. I can't, I can't put him down. What is the problem here? So is forgiveness hard? Absolutely it is. The other truth that the woman on the news knew was that forgiveness is hard. This woman was, was an athletic, vibrant young woman before the bullet paralyzed her and changed her life forever. How could she forgive that? It is not easy to give up our right to be hurt, to be angry, to get back, to hate the other for what they have done. You may have had terrible things done to you by someone you loved and trusted, and they hurt you and they broke your trust. You may have lost a great deal because of someone's actions. The Bible tells us the story of Joseph, whose ten brothers first planned to kill him, and then 
because they lacked the fortitude to do that, they sold him as a slave to traders who sold him to an Egyptian. Joseph went from slavery to prison and then to a place of Pharaoh's court and finally to being in charge of all Egypt, second only to the Pharaoh himself. When famine drives his brothers to Egypt, Joseph uh, has his enemies in the palm of his hand. He plays with them for a while, so if they are still evil, but they are really more pathetic than evil. And just before he reveals himself to them to forgive them, we are told that he wept so loudly that the whole palace heard it. We are not told why he wept, but I imagine it was because he was about to do the hardest thing and the most painful thing. By society's standards, He had the right and the power to kill them, but instead he embraced them. And it is not easy. It's hard. It's hard. It is not easy to forgive. But God is in his grace gives us the power to do it. As he is in on his throne, he gives us the power, the grace, and grace gives his grace gives you the power and gives you the fortitude to be able to stand and say, I forgive you. I need you to forgive me. I want us to be at peace. We are able to forgive because God is in charge. Is he in charge of your life? Is he making a difference in your life? And if he is, put it down in the comments. Is he making a difference? Do you need forgiveness? Do you need to go ask someone for forgiveness? Joseph says to his brothers, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. All this commotion, the slavery being in prison, all the things that happened in this life, it brought freedom to the people of God. And that's the purpose of forgiveness, to set the people of God free. Do you belong to the kingdom? Do you belong to Jesus? Have you given your life to the Lord? Have you told him to be the Lord of your life? And if you haven't, you can do that tonight. In just a few minutes, we're going to be we're going to pray a prayer with you and we believe that your life can change with this prayer. Why? We believe by faith. We believe by faith. We are also able to forgive because God takes even the things that were meant to hurt us and he uses them for good if we let him. God knew everything that was happening to Joseph. He knew step by step by step by step. But it so happens that those things had to happen to free the children of God. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What is the purpose that he has for you tonight? What is the purpose We are able to forgive in the light of God's forgiveness. Jesus lets us know that if we refuse to forgive, then we really haven't grasped our great need for forgiveness or how much God has forgiven us. And thus in our pride, we have not truly repented and God will not forgive us. But when we have our eyes on the cross and the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through in order to forgive us and cleanse us from our sin is can appear pretty mirror to forgive those who harm us. Those who harm us, you're going to be able to forgive them. You're going to be able to forgive. Why? Because that's what the Word tells us. If you forgive, our Father in Heaven will forgive us. Have you done something against God today? His forgiveness is right there at the door. Forgiveness is an act of faith, Yancey says. What's so called amazing about grace? In page 93, at last I understand in the final analysis, forgiveness is an act of faith. By forgiving another, I am trusting that God is a better justice maker than I am. By forgiving, I release my own right to get even and leave all issues of fairness for God to work out. I leave in God's hands the scales that must balance justice and mercy. Yancey, Philip Yancey was able to find out through those stories, through what he's written, what's so amazing about grace. Folks, let me tell you, his grace is sufficient. He saved a wretch like me. Did he save a wretch like you? 
He can save any lost soul. You just have to believe and trust in him. Just like tithing is an act of faith by which we are saying, I might not be able to afford this, but God looks after my needs. Forgiveness is an act of faith because we are saying, if there is any punishment that is needed or any giving of mercy, God, God will look after it just fine. Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 12, 19, 20, and 21, it reads like this. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good with good folks i have to read that one more time beloved never avenge yourself but leave room for the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord no if your enemies are hungry feed them if they are thirsty give them something to drink for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. We must forgive those who have hurt us. We must. God commands it because our own forgiveness hinges on it, but also because it is the best thing for us. When we refuse to forgive, the bitterness grows like a cancer within us, and it eats away at us, causing stress, an illness and great lack of joy. The only therapy for this cancer is the surgery, surgery of forgiveness. When we refuse to forgive, we allow the sin that was committed against us to hurt us twice. Once when we were first sinned against and again by keeping us from receiving God's forgiveness. We need to stop the pain and forgive. We need to stop the pain and forgive. Is there anyone watching right now and you say, you know, I, I need this forgiveness. I need this. I, I need God to heal me. I need this. I mean, is, is this you? On, on, is this you? And if it is, you know, let us pray for you. Let us pray for you. How can we pray for you? How can we pray for you? Write it down right there in the comment section. How do we pray for you? How do we pray? I mean, where, where? Where are you right now in your walk with the Lord? Are you at a standstill? Are you moving? Are you moving backwards? I mean, where are you right now? We have so many people right now uh, 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 praying for you. What is your name? Who do we pray for? Where are you from? Where are you watching us from? Let me tell you, today is not by coincidence. God made this appointment just for you to listen to this word. If you want to forgive, if you need forgiveness if someone has done you wrong if someone has hurt you and you haven't been able to be free folks let me tell you today is a day today is a day today is a day you have to trust him you have to believe in him let me read verse 14 and 15 to you again from matthew chapter 6 he says for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Let me tell you, as a pastor, we go through these things a lot of times. We hurt people, or they hurt us, or they hurt a pastor, or the pastor hurts a church member or a family member. And let me tell you, it's, it's so hard. We live in a world where where everything is so sensitive, everyone is so sensitive, and, and and you have to be so careful. But I'm telling you right now that if you can tell that person, please forgive me. I I I I know I hurt you. I'm still struggling. And then the person receiving that and saying, you know, I, I just can't forgive you. I can't forgive you. And, and folks, let me tell you, your heavenly father will not be able to forgive you. If you have sinned against God, that's like the greatest sin. What, what, what in the world are we thinking? 
that we have more affection, more, more respect, more honor for a person than we have for God. God himself has sent his son to wipe away our sin. No longer will be, we will be able to carry that. He carried it. He pinned it on the tree. The curse, the sin, everything that you and I have been going through, it's there. But we keep on taking it off the cross and we put it back on ourselves. We take our, our baggage to the altar and then when we're done, we go and grab it again and then we go back with it. We go home with it. And here you have an opportunity to leave everything behind. Leave everything, everything, everything behind. I'm telling you, there's an opportunity for you right now to, be, to receive forgiveness. Don't hold on to it. Moms, you might have a child that, that hurt you. Forgive them. Let me give you the secret to your health. Forgive them. Dads, you might have a child that's broken your heart. He's done something. Forgive them. Forgive them. Let me give you the, the prescription. Forgive. There's, there's, there's wives, divorced wives, divorced husbands that went through that brokenness their marriage didn't work out and they needed to get divorced. Forgive each other. There's children involved. Keep the peace. Keep the love. Keep the honor. Keep the respect. These are all things that you learn when you read the Word of God. When you trust in the Word of God. This is what I'm talking about. Folks, my time is almost running out. I haven't seen you. Have you, have you put on there? I wanted to, to send the special greetings all the way to Brownsville, Texas, to Angel and Gladys. They watch us every week, twice a week they watch us. Gladys, Angel, Gonzalez, thank you so much for watching us. Thank you for being part of our church. I'm going to also pray and thank there's Carl, Carl uh, out of, out of uh, Victoria area, down, down the Austin area. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for supporting uh, Bridgeway Church. Thank you. We're praying for you and your son. We're praying for Chicago. We're praying, you know, for those states that are going through terrible, terrible weather right now. Bridges are falling apart. You know, we got people in the hospital right now. We have uh, families that are asking us for prayer over the internet that they're hurting in the hospital. We're praying for the Zapata family. We're praying for you. You're recovering. God is doing something. Sometimes the recovery uh, process, the healing process, there's a little bit of pain, but we, we're going to be okay because the Bible even tells us that he will heal us. He will restore us back to 100%. There's a young man in San Antonio that is watching this tonight. And his first name is Jesse. Jesse, I'm praying for you. Your father loves you. Your father is here with me at Bridgeway Church, and he loves you, and he's praying for you. It's time for you to return, to make a, a turn and get back to church. If you've never been here, we're waiting for you. When you get out of the hospital, we're waiting for you. We're praying, you know, for people that are watching us in Maryland. There's people watching us in Georgia. We're, we're praying for you. A woman that was healed of cancer, we've been praying for her, and God healed her of cancer. God can still heal cancer. God can still heal uh, le leukemia. He can still heal lupus. He can heal the incurable diseases that are out there. He can, he can heal this virus that is rampant all over our world. God can heal as well that. But I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. Who, who are you? Put it down right there. How do we pray for you? Oh, I've got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left. I, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your family. Let me read one more thing to you. As we were opening this scripture, it said this. It said, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have not, no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be, have the glory from men. As surely I say to you, they have the reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you openly, right there in your secret place, right there in your place of prayer, your closet, right there if you're in your kitchen area. Yes, uh, we're praying for England, Europe, 
Austin, we're praying for Austin that is struggling with COVID-19. We are praying for you. I'm seeing this, and he's going through heart surgery. We're praying for you, my brother. I hope you're watching as your family is watching you from Corpus Christi, and I pray that, that you are healed and that you are, as you go through heart surgery, we pray that God will be with you. Uh, if there's anyone else, please send us your requests. There's tons of our staff ready to pray for you. Yes, we're praying for Isaiah and John. We're praying for Isaiah and John. Mom, I'm praying for, for you uh, to have peace and understanding with your children. God is doing something great, and, and we just have to be patient and wait for it. As we close tonight, I want to remind you that this is an incredible book. This is the bestseller. This is the book that you and I have to trust. This is the map that will take us out of whatever difficulty. This is what it's going to do. So I ask you, if you can, share this page. This is, this is an important part of your walk with the Lord. It's reading His Word. Stand by the Word of God. Let me tell you something. If you stand on the Word of God, the Word of God will stand for you. In how? What way? Folks, let me tell you, the real F word is forgiveness. You have to learn to forgive. You have to learn to receive it. You have to learn to let go. Like that woman, she was shot in the crossfire of two men fighting she gets shot she is paralyzed and she could curse she could hate God all these things and she says I know that I need to forgive this person or persons because if I do not forgive God will not forgive me I'm telling you Matthew chapter 6 is a powerful powerful scripture that you and I have to follow this and say I need forgiveness I need to forgive and you can do that today folks let me tell you right now right there on that page share it share it share it people need to hear this and put on there the real f word and let me tell you everybody's going to click on it everybody's going to click on it your friends your enemies they're going to want to find out what is wrong with this person and then they're going to see me they're going to hear the songs wrap me in your arms they're going to hear the song your presence is heaven to me and their lives will begin to change the moment they begin to hear these songs of worship but i want to pray with you i'm giving you one more minute 60 seconds lives are changed in 60 seconds i believe it i believe it do you believe it i'm telling you right now you can receive this healing power of forgiveness 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 come on share it so, come on share it yes we're praying for diana mireles uh, uh, we're praying for your son miss diana i know that you're you're going to be traveling tomorrow we pray to in michigan lord father in jesus name for her son Lord Father, we pray for her as she travels far, far away, Father, to Michigan. Lord Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord Father, we thank you for the miracles that you're causing. Lord Father, I pray for pastors. I pray, Father, for those uh, speaking your word, Father. Give them, Father, the fortitude. Give them the backbone, Father, to speak God's word and to speak it with authority and speak it with truth. Like my brother, Father, Pastor Ian Casar is there in Aranzas Pass, Father, at First Baptist. He's speaking it with authority and power, Father. We pray that every person, every young pastor i'm praying for young pastors under the age of 40 to be exposed lord father i pray that you allow them to have dreams we need 20 year olds we need 30 year olds we need 40 year olds lord father not that the older ones are not good not that we myself we're not that we're not good but we need some young pastors father Lord Father, we, we see in Jesus' name 1,750 pastors quit monthly. Lord Father, the ministry, they run away from the church. They run away from the ministry. I pray that we will not see that ever again. We see pastors committing suicide. Lord Father, remove those thoughts from those pastors in Jesus' name. Lord Father, as I pray for our folks today, Father, they heard the word forgiveness. Teach us, Father, the meaning of that. Teach us, teach us what the Bible says about it. That you, Father, will forgive us and we forgive those that have sinned against us, those that have hurt us. And if we're the person that needs to ask for forgiveness, Lord Father, I pray that you give us the strength to be able to do that. Lord Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will do a great and mighty work in our brothers and sisters, Lord Father, that are just waiting for a miracle those that are in hospitals, those the Father, that are in prisons, those that are in jail, those that are, are struggling, Father, those that have that are going through a divorce. I pray for those, Father. I pray for that, for that lady, for that uh, man. They just didn't make it, Father. They couldn't make it together. They just couldn't make it. There's just trouble, Father. They're, they're, there's a bad spirit in them, and they're just not moving in unity. I, I, I'm praying for that marriage that, that needs 
hear me clear, that needs, Father, to be separated, that needs the divorce. You didn't put them together. They put themselves together. But Father, we pray for clarity on that. We pray that you keep the peace. But Father, you are a wonderful, wonderful God. But Father, you are incredible. And we pray, Father, for everyone that is watching us today. I pray that you, Father, touch the lives, Father, of those pastors, those ministers, those great men of God that you have put in place. Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Father. We ask in your name that you bring clarity, Father. That you, Father, forgive us. That as you forgive us, that we are able to forgive our parents, our family members, our neighbors, our friends. But Father, isolation is a killer. Isolation is a killer. But Father, I, I pray that you do a great and mighty work. And I thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hello, Bridgeway families. Worship through giving with our four ways to give. You can give online at bridgewaychurchcc.org. Give by mail at 3202 Rodford Road, Corpus Christi, Texas, 78414. Or you can use our two mobile apps. If you decide to use EasyTide, create an account and search for Bridgeway Church. If you use Cash App, input dollar sign, we are Bridgeway Church. Thank you and God bless.